Let's talk about clinical assessment of the patient with uh, acute MI. And first impressions are critical. I love this little cartoon. So what does the patient look like? Do they look unwell? Do they look fine? Now, granted, there are some patients who uh, have a really good pain tolerance. Uh, sometimes you get elderly patients who have um, diminished pain sensation, so they may, in fact, be having a big MI and, and be, um, you know, have a, on the low end of the pain scale discomfort. Um, so be aware of those, you know, and then there are patients who seem to be in a lot of pain and may not, in fact, be having an MI. So. Uh, look at the evidence before you, not just their signs and symptoms, but the electrocardiogram. Uh, but initial impressions are important. And um, uh, we want to do a focused cardiac assessment with uh, with patients with uh, chest discomfort. So here's an example. We have a, a 68-year-old uh, male patient weighing 86 kilograms and uh, complaining of uh, onset of retrosternal chest discomfort that uh, he describes as a squeezing feeling across the chest. By the way, 86 kilograms uh, in pounds is 86 multiplied by 2.2, so that's you know, 190 pounds, 195 pounds roughly, we'll say. And um, he describes as a squeezing, squeezing feeling across his chest. It's non-radiating. It began while he was doing some light lifting. He rates it a 6 out of 10 on the pain scale. He's mildly short of breath, pale, diaphoretic plus, which means he has, uh, you know, he's, his skin is moist, and he's cool to touch. The pain started an hour ago and has not changed and is not affected by position and breathing. So if we look at this information, we basically have all the elements of an OPQ or ST here. Now we look at his ECG, so we hook him up to the monitor, and this is what we see on lead two. And this is why I said in my cardiac dysrhythmia interpretation workbook that it's important not to get focused in on lead two. Um, I don't teach a lead two interpretation course. I teach a cardiac dysrhythmia interpretation course. And the reason I, I'm very deliberate about saying cardiac dysrhythmia interpretation and not lead two is because uh, paramedics often fall into the trap of monitoring from a single lead, and that's lead two. That becomes their focus. And so whether you're interpreting rhythms or anything else, you, you know, we need to look at other leads periodically. So this is lead two, and it looks fine, right? And then um, um, here is his vital. So his heart rate is 80 with no uh, ectopy. And uh, this would be fall under the category of a pertinent negative. So normally we might not comment on whether the patient has any ectopic beats or not, but given the fact that this patient presents with signs and symptoms consistent with cardiac ischemia, the fact that there's no ectopy is clinically significant. Um, the respiratory rate is 24, so the patient's a little tachypneic, and that's significant. Blood pressure, 140 on 88, doesn't really tell us anything. It's neither here nor there. The patient's alert and oriented times three. That tell, tells us that his cardiac output is sufficient to perfuse his brain, so that's good news. Um, neck veins are flat. That's also significant, so you know that uh, may help rule out something like acute right ventricular failure or left ventricular failure with uh, chronic right-sided failure. Chest is clear and um, with equal aerotry. Again, that's good. That says right now we don't have any significant degree of left-sided failure because the chest is clear. And the abdomen is soft, non-distended, and non-tender. And it's important to assess the abdomen because sometimes patients can have uh, an abdominal pathology that's referred to the chest. So we need to palpate the abdomen. And I've had a couple of cases where uh, patients have complained of squeezing in the chest. And when I palpated the ab abdomen, uh, I was able to reproduce that sensation. So you know, in this case, it was clearly a abdominal pathology, not a, not a cardiac pathology. No peripheral edema uh, noted, and the patient has peripheral pulses palpable times four. Again, um, tells us that there's no evidence of failure. Now, when we look at his electrocardiogram, this is what I love here. We look at uh, lead two, and uh, we see no SD segment elevation. We look at all three of the uh, um, inferior leads, however, and we see a, a different picture entirely. If we look at um, lead three, we see baseline, we see ST segment elevation. We look at AVF, we see the baseline here, we see ST segment elevation. So this is a patient who's clearly having an inferior wall MI. Let me just bring up a couple of slides. So this looks good when we're looking at the monitor. Whoops, I'm sorry. And um, that, not so good. 